Morning. So you're okay. This yeah. is a sign of life for both of us. Right. You're okay. I'm of, okay. A lot of people asking about that, so I'm glad you <laughs> well, addressed it. Well, dude, I woke up this morning and my phone is like blown up yeah, with people that I haven't talked to in like two years asking if I'm okay. And it's like, dude, in the, the last, first off, what are the chances of me being at a country music concert? Some of these people were people that I knew f f because of music. And I was like, <laughs> right. you of all people know that's the last fucking place I'd be. Second, what are the chances that I, that I would be among the, the 50 people, mm -hmm. right, out of the 20,000, even if I was attending, right? Mm -hmm. But then it's like, do you know how much shit could have happened to me in the last two years? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of crazy. <laughs> that I haven't <laughs> talked to you and like now, now you're worried about me. So we're fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, condolences to those people who, yeah, who lost their lives. It, uh, I woke up to it, as I said, and immediately... Everything about it struck me as this is all wrong, mm -hmm. right? And of course, we're the perfect people to cover this. But I, because of my profession, am in and out of those hotels. Right. I know exactly. those hotels like the back of my hand, right? Mm -hmm. This thing, when I heard what happened, I was like, the first thing that, that struck me when they were like a gunman shooting out of the 32nd floor of Mandalay Bay, I was like, okay, those are all rooms in Mandalay Bay, mm -hmm. Florida, it's got, they've got floor to ceiling windows and the windows don't open. Yeah, this is something not, that nobody's, re nobody's reporting. It's They're, not a window that just breaks too. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> these, win these windows withstand like hundred mile an hour winds. We mm -hmm. have hundred mile an hour winds here. Like these are super heavy duty, super thick. They're meant yeah. to be able to have somebody like fucking up against them. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Cause it happens. Yeah. That's what's going on in these hotel rooms. Uh -huh. So it's like, my question was, did this guy, but he would have either had to bust out the window mm -hmm. or what he cut through it. He cut portholes. Like that was the first thing. And through the, through all of it, it got even weirder and weirder for me, but it didn't take me long to Realize when I saw the location, here's, here's what I believe. I'm going to lay out my, my theory and thesis first. Okay. And so people, if you're watching, this would be a good time to share because I think what I'm about to say is going to make so much sense to you. It should scare you a little bit, but it's going to make a lot of sense because I know this particular area so well. I know the specifics of it and the particular location is so important. Yeah. There's a coincidence in there that is not a coincidence. What I'm going to tell you is this. My thesis and my theory is, at first I said false flag. Mm -hmm. But then I looked at it and I was like, if it's a false flag, this is the all-time worst false flag. White guy with a bunch of guns shoots at white gun rights supporters. Right. Yeah. right? Country music. Mm -hmm. Shooting at people who like guns. Even Dan Bilzerian was there, right? And yeah, he's always he showing too. off his guns. Yeah. So I said, so what is this? What is this? I am convinced now that this was a in the field, live fire weapons test. Huh. I believe that it was a weapons test of a uh, drone, small arms, capable drone. Wow. Okay. We're gonna go over all of the pieces of this. First, we're gonna go over why the official story falls apart. Some weirdness in the official story. Then we're gonna go over all of the pieces of why I say drone, okay? Okay, cool. So let's just, let's just jump right yeah, into it, right? Jump into first thing we talked about, first thing we said was these windows, right? Yeah. You would think had he busted out a window, you will notice the one thing that we are not seeing. Now, first, there are plenty of videos. You can go to videos. We're going to show a map of where they show that where they're saying that he was firing from. Yeah. In none of the videos, when you're hearing the gunfire, do you see muzzle flashes coming from that right. location? Right. I was I was trying to figure that out because I was watching a couple of the videos. And... You do not see muzzle flashes, mm -hmm. and it's going to show the exact room that they say that it was two. By this time. What should we see? We should see a telephoto lens picture of that room, and we should see the window either knocked out or mm -hmm. drilled through. 
because he he either shot through the window and blew the window out as he was shooting as he was shooting or he had already pre-drilled the holes mm -hmm. those would be visible with a telephoto lens from las vegas boulevard have we seen this no. no. This is going to go into the memory hole. People are not going to think about this. This is the first thing to think about. Most people are used to hotel rooms where you can open a window. What they don't know is there's only two hotels on the strip where you can mm -hmm. ex it's 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 by fire code. You've got Cosmo. What's there's a, there's one more. Cosmopolitan for sure. I Cosmo cuz you can go out onto the balcony. What's yeah. the other one? There is one more. Um shit. That's a strip hotel. That's a big strip hotel. I can't even think of it right I don't, now. I don't remember. It's code, though. It's yeah. by code. The reason Cosmo was able to do it was because they initially were building it not as a hotel, but as residential. Residential, condos. yeah. And then they turned it into a hotel, and so mm -hmm. they got an exemption. That was the, that's the only reason why. Okay, for, that's the first thing. So let's talk about how they said they located his room. This is smoke alarm. This is from the Washington Post. It wasn't the hundreds of muzzle flashes that exploded from the shooter's automatic rifles that gave away his position. Nor, which, which is funny that they say that because we didn't see any of those hundreds of muzzle flashes. Nor was it the panic 911 calls from people reporting the rhythmic thundering of gunfire. It was the smoke. As the gunman identified as Stephen Paddock set off round after round, gun smoke filled his room on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, said Randy Sutton, a retired lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, citing police sources. The SWAT team used the alarm triggered by the smoke to zero in on Paddock's position in about 20 minutes, not nearly enough time for a floor-by-floor -floor search of the hotel, which has 3,309 rooms and 135,000 square foot casino. After they located his room, the SWAT team members used explosives to get inside, the sheriff off sheriff's office said. Paddock, 64, killed himself before the officers entered, according to Las Vegas Sheriff Joe Lombardo. Okay, so Christian, so we've got the classic dead guy, kills yeah. himself before they come in. Door was locked, they used explosives. Now this door locked raised a fishy thing about another thing that was being reported by Norm Clark, who's a, a regular columnist. We everybody in vegas has read his stuff mm -hmm. let's see there is there is a tweet that norm clark made it's a very important tweet to this whole thing this was a follow-up tweet he's been if you go and and check him out he's been sort of reporting on this po different police sources people he knows in town he's been tweeting but what's interesting is the tweet that he made that was cited a bunch this morning and now has mysteriously disappeared this is not the original tweet but we will show it go ahead show the tweet this is uh He's, so this is just one of the many things that he is reporting. Uh, Norm Clark, at Norm Las Vegas, if you guys want to go check him out. Sheriff Joe Lombardo, more than 10 assault weapons found in suite at Mandalay Bay Sheriff. Uh, Mandalay Bay Sheriff, shooter killed himself, no record of note. So this is at 6 in the morning that he leaves this. Now let's go to this weapons story. This is actually from WBC News, okay? Just after 10 p.m. local time, Paddock opened fire from his hotel room at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, taking aim at concert goers that were attending the Route 91 Harvest Country Music Festival while Jason Aldean was performing. According to the latest updates, 50 people are dead and another 200 have been injured. The following tweet claims that a police, claims that a police source said that Paddock had eight guns with him in his hotel room. It also claims that he had two platforms where he set up his guns and took aim at the innocent people across the street. So, this is a Norm Clark tweet that has now been deleted, but has wow. been cited over and over. At KTNV, Beth Fisher, citing a police source, said the shooter had eight guns and two platforms set up to shoot from, plus cameras set up to see police arriving. Quote, a federal law enforcement official said a cache of weapons was found inside the hotel room where Paddock died, and investigators believe the suspe suspect used the vantage point to fire on the crowd before, uh, fire on the crowd below, gathered for an outdoor country music concert, USA Today reports. Uh, so also in this is this woman identified as Mary Lou Danley, that's going to be important who has been described as his, quote, companion. She has been taken into custody by police after being called a female person of interest. So there's a lot of early confusion with this, Christian. A lot, and I saw ten, that. Ten guns or eight guns. Mm -hmm. Here's what I found interesting. Two platforms set up right. to shoot from, and 
that, that, that part is so weird, okay? Doesn't make any Two sense. Two platforms and cameras to see police coming. Now, mm -hmm. we know that police used explosives to blow the door open. Where would he have put, it's, it wasn't, they weren't cameras in the hallway. What, he set up cameras in the fucking hallway? No. <laughs> I know this hotel back to front. You can't slide anything but a, a, as thin as a paper under that doorway. Mm -hmm. Where would he have mounted the cameras outside? And people wouldn't have seen cameras sticking out right. from, this, from this door? Yeah. No. Fucking weird. What, where were the cameras pointed? The cameras were pointed down onto the pavilion. Why is that important? That's very important. Huh. It's very important. Filming the carnage from that particular angle. Very important. Now two platforms and eight guns. If you're going to do the maximum amount of damage, you're going to have one platform. We're going to show the map of this mm -hmm. one platform that represents the absolute best shooting position and the gun that you feel the most comfortable with and a ton of ammo for yeah. that gun. No sniper is going to have eight to 10 guns, right? But the eight to 10 guns, the cache of weapons makes sense if this was a weapons test. Hmm. And we'll get into that. Let's show a couple of videos that also I was like, oh, this is fucking weird. This is very strange. Let's show this eyewitness reporting and something that happened 45 minutes before right. this I event. This. Go ahead, it's called All Dead. Go ahead and play this. Turn it up a little bit. No, it's the ten, it's ten. It's the one that's already up over there, bro. Why is it so low? Oh man, we're not getting that. Okay, we'll just go just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and cut back to us. Cut back to us. I don't I don't understand why that is why that's so low. I'm barely hearing it. So basically what this girl said was, and, and uh, you, can, you can go and find it, it's re reported quite a bit, that 45 minutes before the show, or 45 minutes before the shooting, some woman who was, uh, she, she calls her his, short and Hispanic, who mm -hmm. was also with the guy, came up and told a lady next to her, you're all gonna die tonight. <laughs> Fuck. Right, very, very strange. Yeah, it's Very, it's very, very strange. Um, Here's another one. Here's the, here's the video that really tripped me out. Now, what we're going to show, why don't we, why don't we, uh, okay, let's do, let's do this. So, you're going to see a video now that is a guy filming as the shooting starts. Now, he's filming on the, he's basically, it's him, then it's the performer, I guess Jason Aldean is the guy's name. He's performing. Right. In the background, you see Mandalay Bay. The shooting starts, and I want you to pay attention to where he turns his camera because where he thinks the shooting is coming from, okay? This is a very telling video, and it's very important when you understand where he's moving his camera toward. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and show this. So did you yeah. see that, Christian? Right. So he was actually Christian. Go to us. Go to us, oh. bud. We can show. We can show it again. Let's he... let's show it again. Basically, what you're seeing is that the, the the yellow strip of lights going up and down is supposedly the wall of the casino, right in the area where this guy is supposedly shooting from. Now, what you notice is the shooting starts. This guy is hearing it coming from basically his left yeah. behind him turns his camera away from Mandalay the Bay. Complete opposite direction. He's, oh. he's pointing it up at the sign. The, not the sign, the jumbo Right. Now here's what's interesting. If you want to hide, you hide behind a source of light. Mm -hmm. If you have a massive source of light and you want to hide something, you hide it behind the source of light. The human eye can't see past it. He thinks there's something shooting, 
from behind the Jumbotron. Show it again. Show it again. Show this. Watch it. See that? Wow. You see that? Yeah. That he, it, there's hmm. no question in his mind about where the shooting is coming from, that guy, when he turns his camera. So, we're going to now show where the, it's so telling and important what is over there. And the thing is, I know what's over there. I'm, I'm one of maybe even the few people in Vegas who knows what's over there. Mm -hmm. But it's so important. And the people who are conspiracy theorists right now are about to freak the fuck, fuck out, out about what is over there. So let's show these maps. Here's the manual slideshow. Let's do this. Okay. So now on this map, you can kind of get a better idea. We're seeing the vantage point of where supposedly this shooting took, took place, where the room is, okay? So what you can see is toward the middle left here, you see the pavilion, you see the stage. This is the stage that Jason Aldean was on. So now if you... This guy who took this video that we just showed was on the lower left of that stage. So now you can get a good idea of how he was looking up towards Mandalay Bay. So you see the Mandalay Bay is to the right. This guy turned to the left, thinking that something was coming to the from the left. There's a, a, a barren field back there that would have been behind. So this is, this is what that looks like. Now, what I find interesting about all of these maps that they show is they don't show what's over to the left. Every single map that you're going to find on all the news yeah. things, show it like this, basically cut off on that street. So go to this next thing. Okay. And this gives you an idea. This is standing to the right side of the stage. Uh, if you look on the, the thing on the left, it, and it's, there's a little arrow pointing to where this room is. And then if you look, the, the figure on the right is actually the, the room view, the view from the room of what it would look like shooting down into this pavilion. So this is what this guy would see. Again, you notice where it's cut off, that particular view. They're showing, you notice how, that it's moved so far. Like, shouldn't that be centered? Like, shouldn't they right. be centering the pavilion in this case? Mm -hmm. And showing you what's on the other side as well? When was the, do you know when the photo was taken? Does it I think this is like a Google Maps type of situation okay. or something, I don't know. Let's go to, uh, or this might actually be uh, Mandalay Bay did this to show what it looks like from the rooms looking down on a concert, perhaps. Right. Go to the next one. Okay, now we're going to see what is over there. Here's a very important thing. So in the lower left of your screen, that little uh, three, it's got three towers there. That's Mandalay Bay. Towards the middle, a little offset left, you see the pavilion. It's the blue top with the two sides against it. Okay, where that guy turned, was he turned toward the, toward the bottom right-hand corner. Now, this particular location of all the fucking places in the world, when I saw where this was, I fucking freaked out. Because down in the bottom left corner is, you see, that's part of the airport. There's hangars there. Mm -hmm. But there's a very important thing down in that bottom left corner. Go ahead and uh, go to the next one. Oh, shit. Go to the next one. This is showing that. So I'll tell you a little story. If you look at the, up in the top right, you see a three-story building there that's got a little uh, private runway. And you can actually see, I believe, that, that might be the Embraer plane. Anyway. That is Ernie Moody's private hangar. Now, Ernie Moody is basically the guy who invented what we know as multiplay video poker, the things that are in every single one of these video pokers. If you go to a bar in Vegas or Reno, Atlantic City, anywhere, even uh, uh, Indian casinos, this dude makes, he, ha he has the patent and all of that. So he, his company makes about $25 million a month in royalties. Crazy. Now, a friend of his is also a friend of mine and one day invited me out to Ernie Moody's hangar which, mind you, is that thing up there in the top right. 
Now, that's where he keeps his Embraer private jet. He also has an amazing collection of cars in there, really rare cars, including a fully functional Batmobile with uh, machine, real machine guns, which is kind of awesome. So that's, it's a three-story hangar. It's got like uh, all these old school games. It's got an apartment in there. The offices for his company are in there. And in the back, you can kind of see there's a green, uh, some, a green area. So what he's got back there is he's got a putting green, some other things where he goes. When this friend of mine took me out there, he said, well, you see this big wall that they built around this area here. And he said, you see those planes? Do you recognize those planes? And I said, I, I, I really don't. Like, mm -hmm. He's like, y you see the, how they've got the red stripe around them? And you see these armed guards walking around. And I was like, I don't know what this is. Now, some people may recognize what this is. But uh, let's go ahead and why don't you show this Janet video? Or navigation charts, but there's rumored to be a secret airline just for transporting Area 51 employees. The airport allegedly lies on an unmarked airfield, completely hidden from view, unless you know where to look. We think that these are the planes that take people to Area 51. You see Mandalay Bay back These here. airliners? Exactly, mm -hmm. and they're, it's called Janet Airlines, which is pretty amusing. And we're talking about, you know, I mean, hundreds of employees. Janet Airlines actually has six 737s carrying approximately 190 passengers each and five smaller jets. That's a fleet capable of transporting 1,200 people a day to a place that does not exist. No one knows why the name Janet was chosen, but some say it stands for Joint Air Network for Employee Transportation, while others claim just another non-existent terminal. Okay, so what we've got is in directly the opposite, almost exactly the same distance on the other side. So you got Mandalay Bay North, you go south almost exactly the same distance from the pavilion, and you have the air, uh, government secured airfield that is the place where employees go to be delivered to Area 51, top secret government weapons testing facility. Right there, exactly where the guy turns to. This is what made me say, this was a drone attack. Hmm. Why would you need a setup where the guy was set up high? It's at about the perfect level that right. you would put a smaller drone. Mm -hmm. Now it's a smaller drone. It's not like the Predator drones. It's a smaller drone. The type of thing that could be man portable into a battlefield. The type of thing that you could take into a country that had an air force. And you, could, you would have a secure facility to stage it and launch it and to return it back behind a giant mm -hmm. wall on an airfield so that you would know there would be no air traffic in that area because it's too close to the, to the airport. airport. So even there can't be helicopters flying overhead of that that might see it. It's dark. You can hide it behind that thing. Not only that, eight guns. Well, why wouldn't you try out a whole bunch of different weapons? on eight different drones. And you can fly it in from Area 51 in the cargo hold of, an, of one of those airplanes, and you can fly it right back out there in the morning, on Monday morning when you take the people back out. Wow. Now, what kind of drone is this? Hmm. What kind of drone is this? Let's look at this drone. Here's a story. This is just from July, from Defense One newsletter. A breakthrough in drone design gives a glimpse into the future of urban warfare. The Israeli military is buying small multi-rotor drones modified to carry a machine gun, a grenade launcher, and a variety of other weapons to fight tomorrow's urban warfare battles. Their maker, Florida startup Duke Robotics, is pitching the TCAD drone to the U.S. military as well. Lieutenant Colonel Raziel Razi Atuar, a 20-year veteran of the Israeli military and a reservist in the Israeli Special Forces, co-founded the company in 2014 along with a paratrooper turned robotic engineer and another IDF buddy. He says he was tired of watching his comrades die in chaotic street battles that also sometimes took the life of civilians. You have small groups of, adversary, of adversaries. Now, this is a quote. Listen to this. 
quote, you have small groups of adversaries working within crowded civilian areas, using civilians as shields, but you have to go in. Even to get just a couple of guys with a mortar, you have to send in a battalion and you- Don't reopen it. Just click on the icon. It should be down there. Is it yeah. down there? Yeah, yeah. Just click on it. There, there you go. go. And give yourself a, yeah, it looks like you closed your controller as well. There we go. Got it. There cool. we go. All right. A lot of discombobulation here. <laughs> Okay, so back on track. Back on track. So what we're going to show then, dude, is, as I said, this. I'm going to show you the type of drone that I believe was being tested. I believe there were multiples of them. Go ahead and show this. It's called the TCAD. Go ahead and show this TCAD vid. What if we Where's told the sound? you the future is now? Robots are replacing combat soldiers. Unnecessary casualties are becoming part of the past. Go ahead and turn it up. Bro. Minimizing collateral damage and, and uninvolved up. casualties. Duke Robotics presents TCAD, the future soldier. With TCAD, the future battlefield has arrived. A fully robotic battalion capable of identification and surgical neutralization of hostiles in the field can now be deployed to places human soldiers can't reach or simply shouldn't have to go. TCAT is able to adjust for the right place and time. The TCAT robot is designed to identify, target, and engage in real-life scenarios. TCAD takes the full recoil of the weapon discharge, compensates for its force, and quickly readjusts to stay on target and in the fight. The Defense Department chose Duke as winner of the 2016 Terror Combat Competition. The company is in the process of implementing orders from the Israeli forces. Every year in the US, more than 150 billion is spent in R&D and acquisition of better solutions to secure our troops. The total global aerial drone market by itself is expected to reach 10 billion in 2017. Over the next several years, the military robotic and drone sector will continue to lead all other sectors in drone spending. Invest in Duke Robotics. Keycap. The robot that will transform the way conflicts are being solved. Wow. So this is a, a perfect example of the type of drone that I believe that this, this thing was. So what do we have? Here's the situation that we've got. Lone, lone wolf who dies. Supposedly he's got eight to ten weapons in his room. Two shooting platforms, supposedly. How d does he bust out a window? Does he drill a hole in a window? How does he shoot out of a window that doesn't open? Mandalay Bay's windows don't open. We have videos of that exact area where supposedly his room was. There are no muzzle flashes. Supposedly there are cameras that are set up. According to a tweet by Norm Clark, he's got cameras set up in his room to see the police coming. <laughs> but they're, not, they're clearly not set right. up in the hallway. We have the, a military facility associated with Janet Air, which is the, the government-run airline that takes people out to Area 51, a weapons testing range, fully secure, that is about the same distance on the opposite side of, so Mandalay Bay being north, being, no, Mandalay Bay being west, this being to the east, almost on the exact same line, that we have a guy filming, filming the stage that as soon as the shots go off, he turns, turns his camera because he thinks that it's in the opposite direction of Mandalay Bay. So we have all of this going on and we happen to have drones coming out that are, that hold small arms and can do this. Now, if you were going to really test these in a, in a live scenario, what you would want is you would want a bunch of people and then you would want to pick out specific targets and see if mm -hmm. these things could hit it. Furthermore, 
why Las Vegas would be the place to do this drone thing is because the drones are flown out on Nellis Air Force Base. That's where the drone squadron is right. that remotely flies all the drones. So you would want these things to be jacked into the existing systems. You would want it to be close enough. There's a great movie with uh, Ethan Hawke where he's playing, it's, it's relatively new, he's, he's playing a dr one of these drone pilots. You have all of these things lining up. The other thing is this woman, this woman who's now, who was a person of interest, now is not a person of interest. When I saw her name, Mary Lou Danby, I immediately thought, Filipino. Yeah. She's got the Filipino right. name. Turns out she is Filipino. Danby is not a Filipino last name. And she's a, of a particular age. She was married to a military guy. Promise you, promise, there's a military connection. And I would not be surprised if it's not Air Force. And she mm. travels a lot. There's too many things lined up in this whole thing. And especially the fact that it's like very confusing about he leaves no note, mm -hmm. none of this, right? I do, think this is, I do think this is the scenario. I do think that particular weapon system is exactly what they would want right now because there's a lot of things about collateral damage and whatnot. They don't want to be firing these Hellfire missiles. The other thing about it is this is the type of thing that you could use in a conflict with North Korea. Right to take out their top guys, right? You smuggle it in, because it's pretty much man portable. You saw it, it's not much bigger than the gun itself. Mm -hmm. You smuggle this thing in, and then you just set it somewhere, the guy can leave, and it's remotely piloted by satellite from here. All you gotta do is drop it off, attach a weapon onto it, fucking put the ammunition and woo, this thing's up and brah, It could probably somebody. even fly long distance because I know when we were playing with some some drones here, Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, was, I'm sure this thing's got some range on it. Right. I mean, it's, got, it's probably got 20 miles or something mm -hmm. like that. And it's like, it also is one of those where if the other side doesn't know that you have it operational, it look, they're going to be looking for, because it was small arms fire coming from close, they're going to be looking for.